In the previous videos, we have installed Prometheus Operator, which is a collection of tools, which when combined together is going to give us a sophisticated monitoring and alerting system. I would say the key component of this little stack is Prometheus itself, which is responsible for gathering metrics. Now, Prometheus is a complicated tool and it's definitely beyond the scope of this course to show you how to expand Prometheus and add your own metrics and that kind of thing. There are lots of courses on Prometheus out there, but the great thing about Prometheus Operator is it is already pre-configured with a huge set of predefined metrics. So out of the box, Prometheus Operator should be a sufficient monitoring and alerting system for many production clusters. Now the problem as we saw previously is that the front end for Prometheus is by design very basic indeed. It's not really intended for production use. Um, for example, you saw that just finding a metric in this huge list is really difficult and you don't get a particularly rich graph from it. So as you know now, we're going to use Grafana for the front end. So to do that, and I'm back on the results for kubectl get all on the monitoring namespace. In the previous video, we took this service here and we allocated it a load balancer so we could access it. What we'll do now is deactivate that load balancer to save some money. And we're going to do the same process of activating a load balancer for this service here, monitoring Grafana. So the first job then, kubectl edit on the monitoring namespace. And it's this service here. And so in theory, it should be a simple case of changing this type from load balancer back to cluster IP, capital I and capital P, which will remove the load balancer and make it back into a private service that can only be accessed inside the cluster. Now we will get an error from that. Let me demonstrate. Control O to write out the file, enter, and then Control X. And yes, I've been dropped back into the editor for this reason. There is a field that was added when we, it was added automatically when we switched to a load balancer, and it's this here, specs.port.node port. So that's this line here. So it's just a case that field is now re that field is now redundant. We just delete that. It's Control K in Nano, and then I'll try Control O, Enter, Control X again, and good, that worked just fine this time. So let's repeat the kubectl get all, and just confirm now that the the external IP has now been removed from that service. And we'll just do the same thing with the other service, the Grafana. So kubectl edit dash n monitoring. And it's the service called monitoring dash Grafana. And we need to switch the type to load balancer. Control O, return, control X, and the job is done. So if I repeat the kubectl get all now, it will, in fact, it's still creating that load balancer. Let's just wait a minute on that. Well, I had to do a video edit there because it did take quite a long time to create that load balancer. But now that we have a domain name for that load balancer, notice that this front end runs on port 80, which is perfect because we can just visit that domain name without needing to add a port. As always, I know we've had this many times on the course, it's going to take a while for the instances to register into that load balancer. So keep trying this for a few minutes. And yes, after a few moments, you should be seeing the Grafana welcome page. If you have previously studied the first edition of my Kubernetes course, then you will see quite a big difference here because in the stable version of Prometheus Operator, they have made some quite dramatic changes to Grafana. For one thing, it's a later version and you will see some of the charts have changed. And perhaps the biggest change is you do have to log into Grafana. Now, of course, we don't have a username and password, but that's not a problem because it will tell you on the Prometheus Operator page under Helm Charts, there is a full user guide here, basically. 
and as part of the configuration, there is a huge set of values that you can override when you install the chart. I showed you how to override values in the video where we first used Helm. So when you do Helm install, you can just do dash dash values and you can override any of these default values. Well, there are a lot of them, but they are separated by component. So here's a lot of values for Prometheus. Here's a lot of values for Alert Manager that we'll be using a little bit later on. Eventually you'll get down to Grafana. And I think this is what we're looking for. The parameter grafana.admin password is set by default to prom operator. Of course, in a production system, you would be overriding that to something far stronger. Prom dash operator at the time of recording. If you have any problems logging in, do double check this page because I have a funny feeling they might just change that over time. But at the time of recording, username admin and password prom operator should get you into the home dashboard. Now, one thing I won't bother doing on this course is it is suggesting here that the next step to follow would be to add some users to the system. So you can add some non-admin users. We won't bother doing that. And as with Prometheus, really, Grafana, definitely a course in its own right. I'm here just to give you an overview and a flavor for the monitoring system that we get out of the box with Prometheus Operator. Your main port of call is the link here on the top left. If you drop this down, we have a set of so-called dashboards, which are a collection of gauges and dials and charts. Now they have in this version removed quite a few of the dashboards that you might be familiar with if you followed the first edition of my course. In particular, the cluster health dashboard has been removed. I won't go into detail on all of these dashboards, and in particular, the first two in the list, Core DNS and ETCD, are two of the fundamental components that Kubernetes depends upon. ETCD is a distributed key value store where it's storing the entire configuration of our cluster. It's actually a critical component in Kubernetes, but going into detail on that would definitely be a course on its own right for Kubernetes administration. So let's have a quick tour of the things that we do recognize. Let's start by having a look at some metrics for particular pods. Let's say we're concerned about the performance of one of the pods in our cluster. There's actually two separate dashboards for this at the time of recording. This may change over time. Uh, there's a link here to Kubernetes forward slash pods, and there's also a Kubernetes compute resources pod. Both of these dashboards do have some overlap, but they're configured slightly differently. If I start with the Kubernetes pods, this just looks like a very basic dashboard showing a graph of memory usage, CPU usage, and network IO over a particular time period. And you can expand any of these graphs by hovering over the link over the top of the pane. You can drop that down and select view, or you can just use the V hotkey, and that will expand it to fill the full screen. It's quite a basic dashboard, that one. So I think you might probably be more interested in the compute resources pod, which is a bit more expanded and a bit richer. Now, this just shows the CPU usage for a particular pod, and you need to choose that pod using the drop downs here. There are three drop downs. The first one, the data source, is just uh, telling the dashboard where to get the data from. Now, in this configuration, all of the data we're looking at is coming from Prometheus. So actually there's no choice to make there. Whether you choose Prometheus or default, you will be connecting to Prometheus. But we have the familiar namespaces here. So we currently have three namespaces. So if I'm interested in one of my pods, I'll go into the default namespace and all of our familiar pods can be found on this drop down here. So I could look at the details of the queue, for instance, and I can see that this is the graph over the last hour. The CPU usage has kind of been hovering around the 2% mark. Now, there's also a chart here which talks about the CPU quota, and there's a column here for CPU requests, and that's also expressed as a percentage. We will be going into detail on what requests are 
a little bit later on in the course. The UI here is a little bit like Kibana. The default for me is showing the last hour's worth of usage and I can change that at the top right here by clicking on this section here for the last one hour. I could change this to look at the last two days, for example. Now I've been running this system for quite a while off camera just to get some data in. You might not see much data here because of course you're only going to get the metrics from the point that you started Prometheus. So if you've only just done the Prometheus installation, you won't have a lot of data to see just yet. So if I change that for the last three hours, then you can see I've got about three hours worth of data for this particular pod. So we could look at each pod individually. I'm going to pick this Mongo pod, for example, and wow, this is an interesting story. The CPU usage of this pod is going up and up and up and up and up. And although it's currently not consuming that much CPU, if that carries on for a long time, that's certainly something to look into. I'm going to record a video on that, which will be at the end of this section. And we'll find there is actually a quite a serious fault here in the cluster. Now that's okay if you want to drill down into individual pods, but I would guess probably more often you want to look at the health of the entire cluster. And all of that is captured on this single dashboard, compute resources forward slash cluster. So this is giving me the headline information about the entire cluster. So I can see at a glance that we're currently using 8% of the CPU in the cluster. That's across the three worker nodes. And I can see that I'm using 30% of the memory utilization. And I have an historic graph here, which is uh, going back through the last hour. Let's change that to the last three hours. And okay, well, I haven't been running this system very long, but the thing I'm looking for here is sort of stable CPU usage through the history. Now, again, this uh, section here on requests and limits for both CPU and memory. Again, for details on that, check the section on resource limits and requests. So that gives us the health of the overall cluster. If you then find a particular node is in trouble for some reason, then you can drill into that on the nodes dashboard. Again, the data source is irrelevant, but you will have a drop down for all of your instances in the cluster. I'm only seeing three here actually, because when I spun up this cluster, I accidentally didn't change the defaults in COPS. So I actually just have a two worker node system. So I'm seeing here two workers and a master. If you're running with three workers, then you should see four instances here. And what we have on here, if I expand the uh, system load panel, you saw in the Prometheus section that there are three metrics, which is the load averaged over the last minute, the five minutes and the 15 minutes. And they're graphed with these three colors here. So we can see occasional spikes, but the line here, the smoother line, is the 15 minute average. And we have a couple of dials here showing the CPU usage for this node and the memory usage as well. You can also track how much disk you're using in your persistent volumes on this dashboard here. Now we only have that one PVC setup for Mongo, which is storing our Mongo data. And remember that's mapped to an EBS volume. I'll need to change the time period. So again, I'll set it to the last three hours. Nothing very exciting to see here. We can see that it's just relatively flat at the minute at 5%. So that's pretty much it. There is a little bit of duplication here. We've looked at the uh, cluster health with this dashboard here and the individual node health here. There is an alternative for that down at the bottom here, these use methods. Uh, for example, if I look at the use method for cluster, now this is just a, a common practice in monitoring that there is a theory that we can, we can track hundreds and hundreds of metrics, but the really important metrics are the three that form the acronym USE. Uh, the acronym stands for Utilization, Saturation and Errors. And so this version of the dash dashboard shows just that. So we have the CPU utilization, which is the load on the CPUs. Saturation is how much work cannot be handled. So this is basically tracking where the CPU is working too hard, if I can put it that way. 
And now, if I were the cluster administrator here, I would have a serious concern. So the graphs are coloured in to make it clear, and I think the node here, which is coloured in green, there are a few blips and so on, but that looks relatively small, and so too for the blue one on the top, but this yellow area here for, for this node, that looks like there's something really worrying happening on that node. The node is basically saturated. I have a feeling that that might be related to that Mongo pod, which we saw was using ever more CPU usage over time. So definitely something to investigate there. And as I say, I think I'll do that in a separate video coming up in the next section. So that's it for a basic overview of Grafana. I hope that's enough to get you started. As I've said, you could easily do a full-scale training course on Grafana alone, but certainly if you include Prometheus into the mix. On this course, we're focusing on Kubernetes, so I hope this has been sufficient for you. But there is the very important concept of alerting, which goes alongside monitoring. It's a really important concept, and it is built into Prometheus Operator. So we'll be covering that in the next section.